Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I'm going to do a weekly update for my 100 books challenge. And this challenge was created by the evil mastermind criminology, criminology over at his channel. And his channel was to not buy any new books until he has read 100 books that he already owns. There are some exemptions to this challenge. Um, and I was uh, basically finagled into this challenge by my wife last week, um, November 21st, that was Sunday, November 21st. It is now Monday morning, the 29th, and I am going to go all over all the books that I have read since then. And um, what I'm doing is I'm just counting every book that I have completed reading within that week. So if I started reading it before, it still counts towards my my challenge because I finished reading it within the period after I accepted it. So the first book that I read was Who Walk in Darkness by Chandler Brochard. And this is actually the first book that I have read on my brand new um, Amazon Signature Edition Paperwhite. And I will probably do a, a review of this Paperwhite in a separate video. So this book was written in 1952. It has been described as the first beat novel. It is the story narrated by William Blake, um, a struggling author, and his um, friendship with Henry Porter, who may or may not be a past Negro. And that basically means a Negro passing as a white man in the, the terminology of this book from the 1950s. Um, this book has a feel very much like The Sun Also Rises. Um, it is not set in Spain, it's set in New York City, but it is basically a bunch of people hanging out and doing strange things together. And yeah, so that's what it feels like. I can recommend this book. Um, I enjoyed it very much. The next book I read was... Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. Um, this is a cursed book that came to me from Michael K. Vaughn, and he's passing it on from Juan and Plagued by Visions. And um, my goal is to pass this book on to someone else. Um, you can check out my unhauling video of the books that I got from Michael K. Vaughn if you want to sign up and get put on the list of maybe getting this book and maybe some other books as well. And this is the story of Zoe. She is a young woman desperately in need of money, so she is selling an antique apple peeler on a bulletin board in the year 2000. Um, a woman named Agnes volunteers to buy this book from her. Only Zoe tells the story behind it, and Agnes just pays her the money for the apple peeler and says, you can keep this apple peeler and they develop an online friendship that turns into a very bizarre relationship where Agnes is basically controlling Zoe and making Zoe do very odd and disturbing things. Um, there is some criticism that I heard from a couple of the other people who have read this book that is not very believable that um, Zoe could fall under the spell of Agnes so much. I have read other books that leave me to believe that people can fall under the spell of other people. Um, the book I read on uh, Jim Jones, uh, he was the cult leader down in Guyana that gave us the purple Kool-Aid. Those people followed him to their death. Um, people will follow political leaders without any sort of rhyme or reason, even when it's against their interest. I recently read a book about con artists during World War I that was Confidence Men by Marguerite somebody. And um, the Confidence Men were able to convince people that spirits existed. So I can definitely see how someone could fall under the under someone else's spell like that. I don't think this book is especially effective showing that kind of relationship. It's, it's very casual. Um, part of that is that this book is entirely 
within basically emails and chat rooms. And I don't think that was a, a very effective format for this type of story. It's a very distancing format. I do not feel like I understood the character of Agnes at all. She was just a distant person. Um, it's well worth reading. It I read it in a day, uh, you know, average book, but you can get it for free if you want it. The next book I read was an audiobook, Nine Nasty Words. English in the Gutter, Then, Now, and Forever by John McWhorter. And this is one fucking fantastic book. It is the story of cursing and swear words. Um, it's not the first book on the subject that I have read, um, but I read it as an audio book and it was narrated by the author and he is a college professor, but he does a magnificent job narrating this book. And it's all about swear words. Um, and just to give you a brief overview, it's like hell and damn were once very, very bad words and no one was supposed to be able to speak them. He tells the story of the first word, of the first word fuck. And that came in 15, 26 and it was in a document written by a monk and the document was o space d space fucking no g abbot and um it basically said like the o is like a, an explanation um in latin where you're addressing something and the d was for damn that monk could not bring himself to write the word damn but he could bring himself to write the word fucking so he's going, oh, damn, fucking Abbott. It, it's hilarious. Um, and he goes through lots of other words. And it's also describing how the term my ass and your ass are actually pronouns. So my ass read this book and loved it. And I'm telling you that your ass has to get this book and read it or listen to the audiobook. Great book. Second one was Night Flight by Anton de Saint-Exupéry. Um, I really wasn't that thrilled with this book. This is um, a very short novella about um, running postage flights at night in South America during World War I. Um, and it only really got interesting towards the end when one of the night flyers plane was running into some bad weather and he did not have enough gasoline to get home or to land. And that's where it started picking up. Um, it's fine. I am glad I read it. It's never going to be on the top list of books that I want to read or ever reread. After that came Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. This is also came in a package from Michael K. Vaughn with my cursed book. And this is the story of Chris. She is a divorced woman, early to mid forties. She lost her son in a very tragic automobile accident. And she just cannot get over that accident. It's been about two years and she visits not his grave, but the site of his accident every day to pay tribute to her son. And one day she had accidentally cut her finger and that finger um, bleeds over the gravesite. And then she gets visited by the ghost of her son that night. And um, she basically believes that there is a crossroads demon who if you give that demon enough sacrifices, he will return the dead to her. Um, this is a okay book. Again, very short. I enjoyed it. It is going to be part of that giveaway with the other book. Things have gotten worse since we last spoke. So at least two books for free if you sign up on the other video. Next was a book that I read on my Amazon Kindle. This is Grendel 
by John Gardner. This book was uh, from 1971, and it is a book narrated by Grendel from the poem Beowulf. And this is a very interesting book. Basically, Grendel feels that he is a creature apart from God, or if there is a God, he just feels apart. He, he is a monster, and he feels that monstrosity. And, Gren and John Gardner's point is that Grendel is all of us. We are all monsters inside, and we are all apart from the world. And it is a very existential novel. Um, Grendel has philosophical conversations with a dragon. And it's really out of place with the, the setting of the original Beowulf poem, but those conversations between Grendel and the dragon are just fabulous about the, the nature of existence. After that, I read An Episode in the Life of a Landscape Painter by Caesar Aria, and this is translated from the Spanish. Um, this is a book about an historical figure um, a German artist, Johann Mortens Rugerist, or Rugendras. He was a German painter from 1802 to 1858, and he painted landscapes in Argentina. And the reason he was sent down there is that they wanted to see what this landscape looked like, but this was in an area, er, in an era before photography, so they had landscape painters to tell people what it all looked like. Um, I did not enjoy this book. Um, it's sort of written like a piece of a biography, and that could be very interesting. And um, it's about how this artist experiments in his mind about with paintings. And I tried to read this too fast. I tried to do speed reading on this book to get more books read. And that was just a bad mistake. I am not a fast reader. I have to read slowly to understand the book. So that is my update. And that is seven books that I have read. So now I only have 93 more books to buy before I can buy, or 93 more books to read before I can buy more books. Let's see if I can make it. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Goodbye.